But when the Qur'an speaks, does it actually consider the consequences? Maybe I should not say this, it might get me in trouble. Maybe we should kind of circumvent it, maybe avoid that question. The Qur'an just takes it on and gives an open verdict. Like it's in a position of authority. Now the thing is, you need to understand here, there are two opposite things. The Prophet ﷺ is just one man, very few followers, not really in any political position, not really a military behind, nothing. And Allah is the Almighty, all-powerful, who's in the unseen. But when, when the Prophet speaks, والسلام, he speaks on behalf of Allah. So he speaks like a judge, with hukum. But he's not in a position to talk like that. Because he's not a governor. He's not, he's not ruling the people. He's not in a position of power. But when he speaks, he speaks like he's in a position of power. Because he's speaking on behalf of Allah. But when someone who is not in a position of power, speaks like they're in a position of power, they get in a lot of trouble. You cannot talk like that unless you have power. But the Quran says it speaks like this from the mouth of this messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it does so constantly. You know, maybe sometimes a student acts out and speaks up against the teacher or an employee raises his voice against the employer or a you know, plaintiff sitting in a courtroom raises his voice against the judge or a police officer raises his voice against the police chief or one of the staffers at the White House raises his voice against the president but that happens one time and then he just says, okay, sorry, 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 I didn't realize it got out of hand. Happens or no? But with the Qur'an, it raises its voice. And there are those in leadership that get offended. But does it apologize? No, it does it again. And then it says it again, and does it again. This is the second meaning of the word Hakim. It's authoritative. It gives verdicts and it doesn't care. And it does it every time. What was the first meaning? Wisdom. wisdom. It's full of wisdom. Constant wisdom. And then the second, it gives verdicts without consideration. And then there's a third meaning, my favorite one. It has to do with the word ihkam or muhkam in Arabic. Ihkam actually means to tighten something and to make a weave. You know like knitting and things like that? There's a pattern. So when you have a long pattern, it's actually called ihkam. When things are tight together, they're also called ihkam. When something is you know, completely finished, like for example, they have some work done on these walls, right? So if, this wall, if it's unfinished, it's not muhkam. But it's completely finished and all the corners are perfectly done and it's completely symmetrical. Then it's called hakim also. That's one of the meanings of it. In other words, the Qur'an is way too well knit. Everything connects to everything else way too perfectly. You know, and sometimes in politicians give speeches, they have speech writers. <laughs> right? Like the president doesn't write his own speeches. He has a speech writer. But his opposition can take a speech from five years ago Take out a clip and say, hey, in 2010 you said this, and now you're saying this. Even though that one had a speechwriter too, but he messed up. And now they're, they're holding it against him. Does that happen? But you know what? This Qur'an is too tightly knit, so you can't say, hey, what about this? You said that over here, but you're saying this over here. It all just connects perfectly. And all of what, he, what the Qur'an says connects perfectly with what the Prophet himself says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's completely well knit That is the third meaning So let's review this again What are the three meanings of Wal Qur'an al-Hakim? Wisdom it's, It gives verdicts And it's too well knit It's perfectly knit together It's tight together There's no looseness in it There's no one word that kind of slipped out Everything is perfect and tight And exactly where it's supposed to be it is way too perfect. Now, but all of this is proof of something. What is it a proof of? It is a proof of the fact that you, no doubt, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, are no doubt from those that have been sent. This Quran is the ultimate proof that you have to have, this could not be yourself. There's no way this is your, on your own. So now we have to understand why is this proof? This is way too much wisdom for one human being. It's impossible. There are way too many authoritative verdicts. No human being ever does that and does it year after year, day after day, getting himself in more and more trouble. Any human being that speaks and gets in trouble, the next day they speak more or speak less? They speak less, they back off, or they change the subject, or they move to another town. He keeps going after the same people, offending them more and more and more. 
There is no way you are doing this because you want to. You are being told to do this. You are from those that have been sent. Not even on your own. You have been pushed to go. You've been given a mission, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the third was, it's too tight. In other words, people know how you speak. But this speech, this Qur'an, is not like any speech. I, I want you to appreciate that from a communication psychology point of view. It's really cool. Right now I'm speaking to you, I'm not reading to you. But if I actually opened up a tafsir book, right? Or if I had Google glasses or something, and they were just scrolling in front of me, and I was reading the tafsir book, or I memorized some Shakespeare, and I was reading it to you. Would you know that that's not my speech? Would you know that I'm actually not talking, but rather reading? You would know, because the way I speak, and the way Shakespeare speaks, or the way the Constitution speaks, or the way my own essay speaks is different. Actually, the way I speak is not even the way I write. When I write, it's much more formal. And when I speak, it's much more informal. The Prophet ﷺ has papers in front of him or no? No. There's no, he can't, and even if he did, it wouldn't matter. Why not? Because he can't read. But when he starts reciting Qur'an, everybody can tell this is way too tightly knit. There are no, there are no uh, mm, let me repeat that. There's nothing. It's too perfect for this to be a human being's speech. This is, this is not him. This is some other author. So now in this ayah, another thing to understand is that Allah says, you, ha you're the, you are among those that has been sent. But that creates a question. The question that it creates is sent by who? Allah does not say, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ مِنَ Allah. He doesn't add مِنَ Allah. He doesn't say, you are, the, you are among the sent from Allah. Allah has not yet been mentioned at all. All that's been mentioned is there's this Qur'an, it's an incredible recital, it's so full of wisdom, it's so bold in the way it gives verdicts, it's so tightly knit, this can't be his, he has to have been sent by somebody. We don't know who that is yet. You understand? So the, the mystery has been created, but it hasn't been answered. And before we go on, one more thing about this, this, or three more things actually. Three more things about إِنَّكَ al Here's the, Here's the second thing. Who is Allah talking to? He says, no doubt you are from those that have been sent. So who's he talking to? He's talking to the Prophet Instead of talking to the Quraysh and telling them, no doubt he is from the messengers. He's from the ones that are sent. He's not even talking to them. He's not even talking to the disbeliever. He's talking to the Prophet himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know why? Because the disbelievers call him a liar. The disbelievers call him insane. They call him all these things. And you know when somebody calls you crazy? Like, how could you do that? But another person calls you crazy? Then another person calls you crazy? Then a hundred people call you crazy? What might you start thinking? Maybe I am crazy. One person calls you a liar, another calls you a liar, your uncle calls you a liar, your cousin calls you a liar, your business partner calls you a liar, your neighbor calls you a liar. People who don't even know you on the street call you a liar. You, it might start affecting you, isn't it? You need someone to say, you know what, don't listen to what they're saying. I'm telling you you're not a liar. I'm telling you you're not insane. I'm telling you you're not evil. You need to listen to me and forget everything else they're saying. You know, this is the idea of propaganda. They say on the news, Muslims are this, 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 this. I mean, there's a long list of things Muslims are. You know? We, we make people really nervous at airports and in elevators. People get, even the flight on an elevator is uncomfortable for people. And just, just yesterday, I got, I got in the elevator, and there was a, a family, and I pressed the floor for my elevator, and they didn't press anything. So I assumed that they're on the same floor. <laughs> And when I, when the, the time came as a courtesy because they're just women and kids. So I said, you know, go ahead. They said, no, 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 go ahead. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then they pressed the button and pressed the close multiple times. Like, okay. <laughs> Propaganda works, dude. Propaganda works. It's pretty awesome, you know. So now, what I'm saying is, it can even affect you. By the way, are even Muslims affected by propaganda? Against themselves? Do we start seeing ourselves in a negative image? Sure. We start apologizing for being who we are. We start asking our own Imams questions that usually non-Muslims ask us. Why are we like this? Why do we say that? What does the Quran say? You know, they say, why does the Quran say that? And then you go, why is Quran Pak saying this? And you know, like, it's the same question. 
Why are you asking the same question? As the, you know. But you know what the Prophet's being told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He's being told, you don't need validation from anywhere else. I am telling you, you are from those who have been sent. You don't need anybody else's validation. You have mine. That's enough for you. None of the peer pressure counts anymore. But he didn't just say, you are, this is my third point now. He didn't just say, you are a messenger. He said, you are from among the ones who are sent. What does that mean? That means that he's not alone. Because if I tell you, you are from among the Muslims, then there's a large group of Muslims. When you tell him, you're from among the ones that are sent, then there must be others that are sent. So now the Prophet is being told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as alone as you feel, there are people that I will introduce you to, or that I am introducing you to, that are part of the same team, you are part of a larger brotherhood, and, you, and when you have people that belong to the same group as you, then you find support in them. Like if you live, some people live in the United States, there's like they don't see any Muslim in the university, or they don't see any Muslim at the at workplace. Then they're going grocery shopping, and the, you know, they see one guy, one guy who clearly visibly looks Muslim, he's like reviewing Fatiha or something. <laughs> and they get so happy, because I have some support. Somebody else like me. When the Prophet ﷺ is the messenger, he's the only messenger, but Allah is saying, yes, Previous messengers went back, they're gone a long time ago, but He will bring them back to life with His words. Allah will bring previous prophets back to life when He will talk about them. And you will find your support and your comfort in them. So the first validation or comfort is from Allah. I'm telling you, you're from among those who are sent. And second of all, He's been given a hint. Listen, you're part of a team. You're part of a brotherhood. And you will find support in them. Obviously you need support when people doubt you. And that's why the word inna is used in the beginning. No doubt about it, you are from those who have been sent. Because there are people who doubt, but you should never doubt. Now, the last point about the word, this ayah. إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ Not all the ayat will be this long. Just don't get overwhelmed. We do have 83 ayat to get to. But I do want to establish the, the thought process of the surah in the beginning. And I also like to highlight how things are flowing from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. That's part of the job I have, inshallah. So the last thing I want to tell you about this ayah is that the word mursal is different from rasul. The word rasul means messenger. That's an easy translation, messenger. And some poor translations of the Quran also say you are from among the messengers. That's actually not correct. Mursal in Arabic, and ism maf'ul means the one who has been sent. Someone who's been sent. Now there's a difference between a messenger and someone who's been sent. If I'm a messenger, then I could be delivering a message on my own behalf. I could be. I could be the messenger of my own message. But if I'm someone who has been sent, then necessarily it means that the message I have is from somebody else. It's not from me. It's been, I've been charged with something. So now the, the Prophet is being told, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's no doubt about it, you are, the, you are among the group of people that have been given a job. You have been sent with a mission. This is not something you're reciting because you like to, or because you want to, or because you have another agenda. Your primary objective is to be the slave of Allah, and you are fulfilling His commandment. He started the book with Iqra Bismi Rabbik, read in the name of your master, from the position of authority, you are under Allah's authority when you speak. Now, this is gonna be really important later on, but when it gets, actually in the next ayah, so I'll hold off to then. So this, the idea of the Prophet of having a duty, not just that he's being comforted, he's also being reminded that he's on a mission. So no matter how much pressure he feels, he still has a job to do. And then you know, when you have a tough job, you need two things. You need someone to back you up and support you and say, we're gonna get through this, I got you, I got you. And that's done in this ayah. But at the same time, you need someone to remind you, listen, you only have four hours left. Get the job done. That's done in this ayah too. Both dimensions of your, what you need to get your job done are, are covered. On the one hand, the comforting, and the support, and the validation, and on the other hand, the reminder that, listen, this needs to get done. I know it's tough, but we're gonna do it. That's it. There's no choice in the matter.